Good morning. It's a Sunday morning, end of March, and I'm just off to Oxford to help a previous customer who's got issues with their Zoe. So I'm just loading up a few basics, 12 volt battery, diagnostic scanner, and a few tools I've stuck in a cardboard box. Very professional. Oops. I can't lift one-handed. There we go. And this customer bought a Zoe from me four and a half years ago. Uh, August 2018 and they emailed last night to say they've got issues with their Zoe and it's stuck in park and it's going to get recovered to a Renault dealership on Monday morning but they can't get out of park and whether I could advise them on it so I thought I'll nip up there as it's only half an hour away and that's what I'm going to do today and I thought I'll bring you along with me so I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to film, but anyway, we'll see if we can make a video out of this one. So I said I'll be there at 10 and I'm going to get there at 10.02, so uh, I hope he remembered that the clocks changed last night. Well, I'm here in Oxford. Here's the Zoe. Just got to find out whether this garage belongs to them as well, because uh, in the centre of Oxford here, you can't park on the roads. Double yellow lines everywhere. And if you do, they soon nab you, because the traffic wardens bomb around on mopeds here. So. After the customer just turned this on, getting the normal um, electric motor failure red light on there, and can't turn it off either. So, uh, so my initial suspicions are we've got to check the 12 volt battery, but as you can hear, the um, pedestrian warning system is sounding as well. So let's have a look to see what this is like. Right, 11.86 volts. So that shows us the DC to DC converter isn't on and charging the battery, otherwise that would be 14 and a half volts. So before I go any further, what I'm going to do is disconnect the battery, that will shut the vehicle up and I'm going to whack in another battery which is at the correct voltage and then we'll go from there. At least that's going to shut it up. Always the way, when you don't have all your tools I've gone and dropped the 12 volt uh, battery clamp that sits there, down there, at the bottom and then there's an under trail on this so this is what I could do with my magnet on a stalk to grab that. So already the car's looking much better. So let's get to the diagnostic port there. Plug that in and get the scanner switched on. Also the mat is up underneath the pedals. It's surprising how many people do that with their cars, allow that to move out of position and then get caught up around the pedals. So I've just started the vehicle and it has started okay. So uh, I'm just going to scan it now. So this is going to scan through all the ECUs of the cars and look at all the fault codes and going to have a look to see what they are which give you some indication of what was wrong but the only real indication you get is obviously then wiping all the codes and taking the vehicle for a drive and then seeing what codes are represented again and that tells you what the current faults are if indeed there are any i'm not expecting this to be as simple as just a low 12 volt battery because that battery wasn't low enough to be giving the sort of problems it was giving. So that's now scanned. We've got two faults in the um, ABS. Let's have a look at those. That's now scanning the ABS computer, um, ECU again. So we've got multiplex signals, um, a supply voltage. Okay, well that one, that supply voltage could be low battery. Uh, then two faults in the instrument panel. Let's have a look at those. A lot of these could be historic, but uh, 
by quickly whizzing through all the faults you sort of get an idea so again um, signaling and low 12 volt battery so let's jump out of that one and then UCH I can't remember what UCH means but we've got six volts there help if I pointed the right camera in the right place wouldn't it so you can see the screen um, so ah, that's the tyre sensors underinflated tyre flat tyre flat tyre blimey so yeah um, another 12 volt issue so that is probably all historical so let's just jump out of there for now and then communications fault these always have a communication fault let's just have a quick look bum ba -dum, bum bum we codes usb connectivity fault not too worried about that cars produce faults all the time that was my foot by the way um, and uh, a lot of them you can't read too much into it um, so communications UPC we've done oh no UPC two faults again I don't know the acronym for UPC I don't know what that means um, dipped headlight 12 volt right hand headlight 12 volt so two headlight issues with bulbs but is again that due to the low 12 volt battery uh, telematics control unit two volts on that let's have a look read the codes low 12 volt battery protocol communication so again all down to the low 12 volt battery as you can start seeing if you let your 12 volt battery go low it throws all the ECUs haywire and you get all these sort of errors um, so what faults have we got in here a low voltage error again so as you can see low voltage errors get populated across all the ECUs uncoupled pedal seven volts in there and read the codes so brake pressure oh yeah lots of brake errors but including low voltage so now we'll look at the PCB read the error codes relay computer supply electrical disturbance charge plug blah 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 yeah again a lot of these errors could be due to a 12 volt battery right air condition compressor can fault vacuum can can 12 volt static converter battery health current oh, sensor battery hmm not all 12 volt battery issues there but a lot of them are let's look at the PEB unit I think the PEB unit power electronic board I think was it can't remember it's a long time since I worked on a Renault um, but anyway this I think basically is your inverter um, can it was primarily again can be down to 12 volt battery so that's it so while we're here i'm going to look at the bms battery management system in the battery pack and live data all signals and just have a look at the traction battery 
and then I'm going to just have a look at the battery state of health. Not that I need to know, but it will be interesting to look at and tell the customer while I've got the scanner plugged in. Battery condition, 65%. Hmm, that's not good. This car needs a BMS update, I think, because it shouldn't be that low. So what I've done is I've erased all the codes and they've all gone apart from 8 volts in the PEB. But the car seems quite happy, so I'm going to fish that bracket out from the uh, under tray that I dropped and then take it for a drive, see what other faults reoccur and uh, then see whether it is indeed the 12 volt battery causing all of this or there are other faults with the um, PEB module, which I suspect that's the underlying cause. But anyway, the car's now um, starting and it it moves. So uh, anyway, let's see if I can get that um, bracket out because that's going to be rather awkward now. So I'm just taking the Zoe for a little drive and it seems completely happy. And as you can see, really am right in the heart of the city here. And now I've just turned around, there is a charger here. Didn't know this existed. It's a rapid charger on the um, on a side street here, just where there's um, parking, and it's an EV charger, EV box, by EB Charging, by the looks of it, and it's got um, CCS on this side and a Chadamo on the other side. But anyway, the Zoe seems happy, so the customer can cancel their uh, recovery in the morning to get it um, recovered up to the dealership because for now it looks like the 12 volt battery was the issue there's clearly some underlying issues on the car anyway but it's not stopping it from driving for now so they might as well cancel their recovery and um, continue driving it until anything else raises its head again so i've got the uh, clamp back from the bottom of the car with the help of um, a coat hanger and various sticks and we had a magnet on a bit of string and also the children's arms but eventually got it out with a coat hanger so that saved getting underneath the car and taking the under tray out so new battery in that battery was charged overnight because i had my suspicions it was 12 volt battery so um and their existing battery the voltage has jumped up since it's been out of the car which you'd expect it's 12.4 volts now so that's good but the state of health is only 41% state of health and it's 79% charged. So this battery isn't very good. It's actually not very old. It's got a new sticker on there. I suspect Renault changed that with the last surface. But anyway, I'm going to take that back, properly charge it and test this battery. But for now, the car is up and running. The new battery has got a slightly higher capacity. So that will help a bit. But anyway, it's done. I've also popped their ring back together because that had been smacked and had come undone. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just do another scan just to see whether any faults did arise from that little test drive. So I'm scanning all the ECUs again. Um, been testing the heater, that works fine. I've asked the customer, well, I've advised the customer that they should have an air conditioning regas because of the age of the car. And on these, if the air conditioning, the refrigerant level gets low, um, you can um, ruin the compressor, which is then an expensive job and it's so reliant on them on these OEs. Um, and you want to do that every three years or so. Uh, this is a 2014 car, probably hasn't been done since we sold it to them four and a half years ago. So no, it hasn't actually, I did ask them. So yeah, that needs doing. So I'm gonna check that out on the scanner as well. But apart from that, I'm happy. The car is running, the customer's very happy um, and they can cancel their recovery for the morning. And uh, it means they can still use the car tomorrow to take the kids to school and that sort of thing. So um, it just shows what a 12 volt, how important that 12 volt battery is. And if it gets critically low, it can just throw everything in the car haywire and you can get the errors on the screen. And the mistake people make is they see that error on the screen where it says electric motor fault or um, electric electrical fault and they assume the worst, think the car's knackered and think it's, they often think it's the main traction battery. 
but the simple things always things to check and EVs are no different to combustion engine vehicles they're completely reliant on that 12 volt battery up front so the other thing they've got to do is get this battery the traction battery sorted out this has got a leased pack so on when you lease a battery you have a 75 percent state of health guarantee and it is now below that this one is 65 percent so below that threshold so they can claim on the battery lease and get it booked into Renault and I'm sure it'll just be a software update in the BMS and that will restore the battery back up to something like 92 94 percent something like that so they're going to have to sort that, that one out I'm just going to scan it again um, but yeah this car is done so I'll leave it um, there so as always if you found this video useful or interesting please do click the thumbs up button on YouTube that really does help do subscribe and I'll see you on the next video